Yesterday, the EU opened its parliament for its first parliamentary session after the recent elections. At the beginning of any parliamentary session, it is customary for the nation to play their national anthem, which apparently includes the EU. But unlike the EU, everyone else has a somewhat unique national anthem. Not the EU, though. The EU play Beethoven's Ode to Joy because apparently they couldn't get the rights to the final countdown. Of what has happened, two rather unique instances took place during this national anthem. Firstly, that the Liberal Democrats turned up in their brand new seats, emblazoned in their yellow t-shirts, because nothing reeks of professionalism more than a bright yellow t-shirt with the words bollocks to Brexit written on it. At this point, many will say, why couldn't you have one that said bollocks to Brussels? These petty displays, or gestures even, show just how pathetic you make the British public look. Then again, this is hardly surprising, as all the major parties have allowed themselves to fall in line with vapid identity politics, point scoring, hollow sound bites, and insults. It's inevitable that the Lib Dems would somehow rise to prominence again, and they themselves unironically insult the British people because they think Remain won the EU elections recently. No, you didn't, because not one of you parties can work together, because you're all precious. In that election, the Brexit party won, and they themselves also did something that many could argue to be quite pathetic. You're seeing the video on the screen now. Let's see if The Telegraph or The Guardian are willing to copyright a muted piece of video playing so you can see what they did while Ode to Joy played. Part of me was concerned that Ode to Joy would get me copyright struck by the EU themselves. Hmm. When asked about why he turned his back, Nigel Farage stated that when accused of it being disrespectful, that is, that I'll tell you what is disrespectful, taking the ancient nation states of Europe and turning it into one country with its own anthem and flag without ever asking for permission. I would argue it's not a country. It's a massive trade deal that has turned into something else, which is a bit sad, really. During that same Sky News interview, which I'm not playing a clip of, obviously, he also indicated that the two contenders, Hunt and Johnson, have said that they'll leave on 31st of October, come hell or high water, and that he doesn't believe a word of what they say, and that if they don't deliver on Brexit, on that date, they are toast, and that we will see a turquoise takeover, which, I'll be honest, yeah... It will happen. When asked about what had happened in the parliament today, Antonio Tajani, the parliament's president, did indicate that it be respectful that people stand for national anthems, so why not do it for the EU? But Farage is right. The EU is not a country. I know that there are people who have shown off their European passports, people gloating about it saying European as a nationality. You're precious. It's not a nationality. It's a continent. I know you're trying to turn the continent into a country, but you're building it on a foundation that is essentially made of sticks. I will say that yes, this does make us look pathetic. I agree with all of those that believe it. I do, however, also want to point out that things that happen without anyone's consent, things that happen without anyone's due notice, or things that happen that people don't agree to but happen regardless, are going to get a negative response. The Brexit party is a reaction to why we are still there when we should not be. And if we are still there in five years' time, I can't imagine the Tories or Labour having a majority in Parliament. A minority coalition could possibly happen. Farage claimed he is the biggest single party in Europe. He's partially correct. He's joint with a German CDU, CSU, or whatever it is, coalition, alliance, nonsense party. My apologies to anyone that is of that party. I just can't be bothered to remember the six letters with the hyphen in the middle, okay? Some alliance, okay? But the key difference is he's unable to get cross-party support, which means during debates, his voice will never be heard now. But his presence alone, along with all the people he holds in that room, means he holds a considerable amount of influence when it comes to voting on key matters. And as a country that's supposed to be leaving, the last thing you want to be doing is annoying the person that could stonewall you, especially if you need key votes. As far as the Liberal Democrats go, yes, a bunch of idealists voted for you, in protest because they couldn't be bothered to vote for the party that voted leave, 
and respecting the will of the vote, but also while you pander to the young people who didn't get a vote last time during the referendum, because they are also, some are, idealists. They have yet to understand that (sighs) Brexit happened and we are meant to leave. It's also worth pointing out that yes, they turned their back. Yes, the Liberal Democrats turned up in bright yellow t-shirts. Majid Majid got turned away for reasons I don't care about. But also, not all MEPs stood anyway. You can see it in this photo. Not all stood. Because it's not a national anthem, it's an orchestral piece. Okay, yes, some national anthems are derived from orchestra as well. But they can't all be as amazing and unique as the funeral march of the many, many verses of God Save the Queen, even though God not real and many want to abolish the monarchy. As a final little thing, if the EU does decide to adopt a national anthem, I think they should come up with a more unique national anthem. Something that truly encompasses what they are. I'm thinking something that might be a bit past its date. Something a bit outdated. Something that doesn't really work, but silly little people still somehow appreciate. How about this?